The real reason why we came to Detroit was because Detroit, throughout its history, has always been a leader in terms of what's coming next for the rest of the country. It's like a bellwether. Uh, and so we thought, if you really want to understand America, mm -hmm. come to Detroit. Right. So that said, how do you find the particular stories that you know we get to follow in the first episode of the people? Is it just through you know people bringing their photos to you, or do you go and search for, for that? It's a combination of things. So uh, we started a process roughly six months before we began filming here in, in, in Detroit to research the history. And in the course of doing that, we had a lot of input from people uh, here at the Historical Museum, uh, as well as at Wayne State University. We read a lot of books. We looked at a lot of uh, newspapers and magazines. Uh, and part of what our research is looking for not the, the bold-faced name kind of people, right. uh, but looking for those little stories that would get overlooked. So whereas we have great newspapers here in Detroit, our research focused on the smaller newspapers. Right. We would go into the neighborhoods, we would get the little throwaway things by the cash register or just as you're coming out the door, and we'd see who's in that. Because those people are being highlighted by folks just like them within their own communities as right. people that they recognize as leaders or are doing something that's positive. And that's the other thing. We're not looking for sensationalism, we're looking for the positive. We're looking what can we learn that's going to be aspirational or uplifting. And so part of our research as we were going through all those little things, we'd see these little names and we'd kind of reach out to them and see, would you be interested in telling your story? Mm. What's your family connection to Detroit? Um, and then of course, uh, that's how we, we, we kind of found uh, the main characters. Uh, and there are about five main characters. Right. Uh, everyone else though, we did a series of what we call community photo sharing yes. events. Yeah. Those community photo sharing events are kind of a come one, come all. Uh, we were in seven different locations around the city. Uh, we invited people to come to museums, libraries, uh, churches, and share with us 10 to 15 minutes uh, their images and stories that meant the most to them. That's all we said to them. Bring those images, those stories that mean the most to you. We then kind of going through and listening to all of that material. I mean, and we probably had, on average, 150, 175 people uh, come to those events. Um, we kind of noticed patterns and we noticed things that then became the thematic elements for the show. Uh, and then we used those personal testimonies to flesh out and provide nuance for those major themes. Right. So <coughs> the ultimate show, Family Pictures USA Detroit, it's the future and it's okay, uh, looks at Detroit as a, you know, from a framing device, uh, going through his historically its evolution from frontier town to what it is now. Right. Uh, but through the family stories that kind of augment Native American history, uh, what's happening with newcomers and immigrants to the community, um, the contributions of African Americans to building Detroit, Detroit's music history, but not in the way that it's typically told. Right. Uh, we want the people that are underneath that, yeah. or the people on the side that we kind of go by and we, you know, and nobody really focuses not on. Not just straight to, we're going straight to Motown, we're going straight to Barry and right. Stevie and... Right, I mean, so we went to Universal Sound <coughs> Studios. Uh, we went to... Um, well, we got at Aretha through Joe's record store. Uh, we, we looked at histories that people are sitting on that are really interesting stories about Detroit and what makes it special. But you're not going to read about it in a you know, Detroit Free Press, right. sadly. So or is, is like that, that the overall goal of the project, is to illuminate history and stories that would otherwise be overlooked? Absolutely. Because history is curated, right? And it's curated by certain people that have been given um, certain authority by someone that that is the official history. Right. We're not interested in that. That's a jumping off point because all of, the, all of that started with certain biases and predispositions that left out whole swaths of history of people who were here contributing and making things but because they didn't fit a particular narrative or because mm -hmm. they didn't, um, they, they weren't part of the in-group, they were left out. 
And so that's the history that we're interested in. And that history hasn't really been explored. And if it is explored, where are you going to find it? It's in those family narratives and those family stories. So we're talking about photos, people bringing in historical pictures that mean a lot. And oftentimes, they're physical copies. But we live in a day and age where there are billions of photos taken every single day and uploaded every single day. So how does that impact what you're doing? Actually, we did a film called Through a Lens Darkly, Black Photographers and the Emergence of a People. That film was about black photographers and their use of the camera as a tool for social change. And in that film, we interviewed over 50 photographers and we looked historically uh, all the way back to the very beginning of photography. Jules Lyon was a free man of color in New Orleans who happened to be in Paris and saw Louis Daguerre uh, demonstrate the daguerreotype and he brought that technology back with him to New Orleans becoming what we think is the first photographer, professional photographer in the US. Oh, wow. It's histories like that 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 film focused on and because they were black photographers. By and large, a lot of their archives really weren't collected. Right. And so Deborah Willis, uh, who's an eminent uh, photo historian in, in, in the history of black photography in particular, had written several books about these people to shine a light on their images and the work that they were doing. When we went to look at some of those images or look for some of those images, a lot of that were in family photographs because those black photographers captured something they captured the black family throughout history. So going all the way back to the 1850s and all the way forward to today, black photographers were capturing a slice of this country and its history that you couldn't find in the Life magazines or you right. couldn't find uh, in, in, the, the, in the, the archives of, of major places. Um, and so it was the process of making that film uh, that led us into searching family photos and family archives to, to, to highlight and bring those photos forward that led us to this journey that ultimately results in Family Pictures USA. The motivation to take a photograph today, whether it's digitally or back in the old days with uh, an actual camera, right. um, hasn't changed. The point of it, as uh, Leopold Singor said, is to capture you know, one person's, or to basically link one person's eyes to another's heart. It's, we capture people that we love, moments that, are cherished, that, that, that we cherish, that are important to us. That motivation has never changed. Even the selfie, that horrible <laughs> malign thing, <laughs> right? right? right. Uh, we're trying to capture an instant that makes us feel good. So. When we extract individual images, regardless of how we do that, whether they're the physical artifact or they're digitally, we're extracting those moments. And then it's the frame that, or the context that we put them in that gives that meaning. What we're doing in this project is kind of twofold. One, we want to create a frame that says, look at us, aren't we special? Right. And the second thing we want to do is to get people to realize that these images are just as important to our social and cultural history collectively as they are to those individual families or to that individual person in terms of the archive that they're creating. That kind of leads me into my next question. When it comes to the photos and the importance of them, and again, you've said it, you have a large amount <laughs> yes. Um, and, yes. um, stockpiled. What are some similar themes that you've seen? Because a big part of this is you have people from a huge diaspora all across the board, but there has to be some sort of common thread that you can pick up on. It is. Um, we're human. We're human beings. And the people that are important to us are the same, regardless of our ethnicities, our background, our gender, uh, our sexual pre uh, preferences. It's people that we love and people who love us. That's universal. We do the same things. We celebrate birthdays. We have anniversaries. Uh, we bring family gathering together for all sorts of things. And it's the, it's the importance of that every day that, that really is what we want to focus on uh, because that gets overlooked. But that, every single day, every single person going about their lives, doing their daily thing, 
is contributing in one way or another to the overarching culture and society that we are all a part of.